using ESP8266 as a web server to control hardware as well as read in data from hardware. Before I made that complete server with the LED relay and temperature humidity sensor, I started out smaller with just an LED, so that's this sketch. And for more info on controlling a relay with an ESP8266 or the SHT21 sensor, I'll link to previous videos for more info on those. With just the LED, I have the serial monitor running, and all it really does is show me that I'm connected and what the IP is, so I don't even need it after I've booted. And the web page is right here. It doesn't need much space, so I've crammed everything in up here, and I will turn the light on to start. So I have the Node MCU ESP8266 connected to USB so I can get debug messages and power. It's running Wi-Fi server and controlling one LED. The way the server is set up, it tells me whether the LED is on or off, and then it gives me the option to turn it on, turn it off, or toggle it from whatever it last was. So every time I click a button, it'll go perform that action and then come back to this page and refresh it to show the latest status. I'll go more in depth in the other web server sketch that has more features, but this one's meant to be a simplified one that's maybe a little easier to absorb. So we include what we need for libraries to do Wi-Fi and a web server. We create the web server object listening on port 80 for client requests. We would enter our Wi-Fi credentials. The LED pin is on D3. And to send out this web page, it's basically a text string that we're calling HTML page that we build up with all the correct HTML tags and any custom text we want and creating these buttons and things like that. It all goes into the one string and gets sent out from the server to the client. Maybe I should have had another button to make the LED blink so it's more entertaining instead of just watching this. So in the setup, we configure the LED pin and turn it off by default. We join the network. So this is very standard code. Wait till we've connected, then show the IP. Down here, we begin the actual web server. But before that, we define the behavior and the actions that should be taken when a client request comes into the server. When a client wants to go to the main page, the root, run a function called handle root. And what that does is generate this web page. It'll show the LED status, draw these three buttons, and then you're allowed to click them later. So when you do click a button, it's going to reference a certain path. And when the server sees that the client wants to go to one of these paths, it'll go and run another function to handle what we want to do. So you click the toggle button and the web page which is the client, tells the ESP server, I want to access the LED toggle path. And the server will go and run handle LED toggle. And similar for the other buttons. If you try to go to a path that doesn't exist, you'll go to the generic handle not found, and it will send out a 404 error. So here, I could go directly to, right here, LED toggle. It's a valid path, and the LED should go off, and then the web page refreshes and we see the status is now off. If I go to something that doesn't exist, we get the 404 error. So we'll just have to manually go back to the main page. So now the server is running, it's listening for requests. When it gets a valid one or an invalid one, it will know what to do on the web page. And that's it for the setup. In the main loop, all we do is let the server handle client requests. So the whole sketch is just sitting listening for HTTP requests from clients. And here's those functions. I will go more in detail on this in the next sketch where I expand this to control an LED and a relay and a digital humidity temperature sensor. Now I have NodeMCU with the SHT21 digital temperature humidity sensor, an LED and a relay. This is the schematic for the entire system. We have Node MCU ESP8266, 5 volts and ground bus on the breadboard, 3.3 and ground bus, I squared C default pins going to the SHT21 humidity temperature sensor, getting 3.3 volts, ignore these vestigial connections, the LED 
through a resistor to ground, and the relay output pin going to a relay control input, and the relay board gets 5 volts and ground. So when something happens on the web server and it's time to do something with the LED or the relay or to read from the sensor, those peripherals will be accessed. So I can directly control the LED by clicking on, off, or toggle, which will just keep changing the state. Same with the relay, on, off, or toggle. And the relay has an indicator light on board, but also I'm controlling a 5 volt light with the actual relay contacts over to 5 volts from the Node MCU board. The temperature humidity sensor is on I squared C and it's being read by the Node MCU board every time the main page of the web server is being refreshed. It's set to refresh every 10 seconds, so if we keep watching, it'll update. Otherwise, if we click a button, it'll refresh automatically at that time. I'm showing temperature degrees Celsius and relative humidity percentage. The serial monitor just shows the status of connecting to Wi-Fi and once we're connected, what's our IP address so that we know where to go in the web server. So I will put this up here. We don't really need to see the serial monitor. There's nothing there. And here's the expanded sketch. We need to include the Wi-Fi and web server libraries. And now that we're doing temperature humidity, we include that sensors library as well. We create the web server on port 80 and an object for the temperature humidity sensor. Now we have an LED and a relay pin, both our outputs that we are going to control. To generate the web page, we have a string called HTML page that we keep building up with all the HTML tags and things before we send it out. In the setup, we initialize the temperature humidity sensor, we initialize the relay and LED pins as outputs, and we set them both to be off. The relay is active low, so we have to set it high to turn it off. And the reason we're doing a digital write before we set the pin mode is because when you set pin mode, it will set the output low unless we previously write it high. And this prevents false relay chatter and triggering. Then we do the usual connecting to Wi-Fi. The server needs to know what functions to run when a client accesses a certain path on the server. So of course the root path is going to need to display a web page and as we click various buttons to control the LED and the relay we associate those actions with various paths and functions. And if somebody tries to access a path that's not defined here they'll get the 404 not found error. So we're continually listening for HTTP requests and when one comes in, we go and run the correct function to process it. So if somebody tries to go to the main page, we build up the HTML page with these menu options, and then we send out that generated page with an OK response, telling the client everything's good and here's the info. If somebody clicks the button associated with toggling an LED, then it's going to run handle LED toggle, which is right here. So this will go and set the LED pin to the opposite of what it was and then send out a header that redirects the web page's location back to the root with the associated response code. You click toggle LED so you end up temporarily going off to the toggle LED link and then coming back here and reloading. So we can go directly to that link LED toggle so right now the light is on and it just went off and then redirected back to this main link. You can see we're back just at the root. So similar for handling when we want the LED to go on or off, we just write the appropriate high or low to the LED pin and again redirect back to the root. Then we do basically the same thing for the relay except the polarity is backwards because to turn the relay on we send a low. And if there's any other request made to go to a link that doesn't exist, we get the 404 not found error. And we send out the proper 404 response code from the server to the client. To build the web page, when we go to that route, we start adding text to this HTML page string, which is a bunch of HTML tags and codes and things 
what we're doing here, we're basically creating a very simple web page. So I found this page to be useful, w3schools.com, and they have some HTML tutorials. And here's an example of a basic web page. So it starts saying doc type is HTML, and then there's a header, and that's where you set the page title, which is what shows up at the top of the browser page. Then you can do headings and paragraphs, and finally you end the body and the HTML and all that. And they let you click it to see how it actually looks. So you can change it and rerun it and see what the results would be. So using that and other resources as examples, I set the title of my browser as ESP8266 Web Server. I also set a meta tag to make this page auto refresh every 10 seconds and the temperature and humidity are going to update. Because I'm showing this degree symbol, I had trouble getting it to show up until I figured out I have to add another meta tag for a character set UTF-8, and that finally lets me show this character. In the body tag, I set the background color so it's a little gray, and that makes these buttons show up better. So the first thing I want to do is show the temperature and humidity. So I'm adding to my string the text for temperature or humidity. I go in and get a temperature or humidity reading from the sensor, convert it to a string, and add it to the HTML page. For the buttons, I want to show currently is the LED or the relay off or on. So I go in and read the ports to check the status and add the state to this title text, either LED or relay, so it shows up LED off on, relay off on, and then for these buttons I'm using an HTML form so that when you click the button it'll go to that link, LED on, off, toggle, relay on, off, toggle. So that's how the web server in the ESP knows what button you clicked and then it knows what routine to go run. So you click the button for LED on, it triggers this path, so then server on the LED on path, go and handle LED on. That's how it knows what to do. So this value is the title that's going to show in the button and all of that. It's just basic HTML stuff. We can create lots of other things too, like those little squares with the check boxes where you can put a check mark or an X or a radial button or something. I just did this basic button structure to get started. So that's what happens when we're handling the root, when somebody just goes to the main page. We go and build the HTML page, which we just looked at. That creates this HTML page string full of all the website content. We send it out. So that's a basic HTML web server with the auto refresh. In the future, we can also get into using JavaScript and Ajax, the asynchronous JavaScript and XML, so that we don't have to refresh the page to get data. We can just have it asynchronously update only what we want instead of the whole page. That'll be for another day.